Uh, next, go to the next tab, and which is a display. Um, I kind of like this one because uh, sometimes uh, you know you might like to uh, change some very primitive stuff from your display, and also if you are working with a computer that does not have a very good graphic uh, card or like a graphic computational resources, uh, you can go ahead and change some stuff in your display to have a smaller and better result. Uh, the default color here for any object uh, is this weird color. Um, I'd rather to have some other color like, uh, I don't know, you can change whatever color you want. You, if you have problem like uh, seeing some color, colors or uh, your monitor is like not showing colors well, you can change it here. Um, it's basically when you are creating any object. Uh, this color would be assigned to the color to the object by default and um, you can change it as as I said here or you can change it through the property windows um, as you can see later on so I'm just changing it to the gray uh, default uh, view render is very important if you want to have if you have a very uh, complex uh, structure you go with the wireframe um, there is a short key for that, uh, I think it's F9, and uh, when you do that, uh, you can basically switch between high um, computational, graphical computational uh, rendering or a very simplified version of your structures that uh, does not need a uh, huge uh, graphical rendering. Um, I prefer a smooth shaded because it's easier for me to see the model, uh, but if you go with the wireframe, uh, you are one of those people that probably are very familiar with the AutoCAD, very earlier version of the AutoCAD that uh, everything was in wireframe uh, mode. Or actually, early 19, early 2000, everything was in this kind of a uh, uh, rendering mode. Um, so, default of a smooth shade is fine uh, if you have no problem uh, moving around the objects. Uh, default transparency is another important thing. Uh, when you are creating things, uh, the objects, if you want to see, for example, if you have too many objects inside the, the other objects, you probably want to be able to have a kind of a see-through uh, objects uh, in your simulation so you can see the, the inside objects and get a better look at um, what did you design. However, uh, that being said, these trans these defaults, the settings here is not going to uh, impact in any uh, sort uh, to the simulation result of your EM simulations. So uh, you can rest assured about that. These are all the visual uh, properties that you will see. Nothing to do with the simulation results. And <coughs> Right now we have here object uh, visualization, outline construct. That part I have no clue what it is, outline construct. Um, but I think it's something to do with the perspective, I guess. Um, so that part I don't know. If you know, you can comment it out. Um, and basically I don't see any... Oh yeah, another thing that is kind of uh, not bad to know is the default tree layout. So here the tree uh, layout here is when you uh, define a material, it will put all the objects that have the same material into one group and the group name would be the name of the material. Let's say you have uh, copper and uh, you know aluminium and then you will, ha you will see here copper, aluminium and un undefined materials or whatever. And then when you open the copper, you see all the objects that, that, that are under the copper or has the material. Uh, property of copper. Um, you can you can uncheck that if you don't like to store it by, by material. Uh, but it's 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 basically up to you. I don't I don't see any uh, logical uh, benefits checking or unchecking that. It's basically personal preferences. Okay, let's go to the last part, which is the drawing one, and this is also important because uh, hopefully you are familiar with the with the with the snap. And uh, what is the snapping is so to those who are not very familiar with the snap um, in the 3d design most of the time uh, it's very hard for your mouse uh, because your, your, your screen is 2d you don't have a 3d screen 
so your mouse sometimes has to go and snap to the points uh, that you you are you, you basically meant to go but uh, it's hard to get there because it's a, it's not a, it's not a 3d uh, screen that you have you are seeing everything in 2d or your movement is in 2d so a snap one use of a snap is basically a snap to the obvious positions that you are looking for but it's not very uh, easy to get there the other uh, good point about a snap is when you are going to measure or create some things exactly um, you know in an exact terms if you are not look if you are not following um, the dialog uh, method of like uh, put, putting the points uh, you know all numerically and you're doing it with mouse you can still go uh, in a very precise manner if you have a, a good snap uh, system and in the snap system you can basically snap to the edge of like any edge center you can um, snap to the vertexes of your your design uh, you basically of course you would snap to the grid system that you have the grid is this uh, uh, grids that you can see here as in, in a gray um, so because it's the because my uh, as you know from the previous tutorial, because my uh, plane is right now on X Y, the the grid is like somehow uh, flattened on the X Y plane. But the, your mouse will automatically uh, grid uh, snap to this grid. Of course, this points the intersections. Um, if you have a structures, vertex, face centers, uh, quadrants, and arc centers. Uh, here the arc center is not uh, checked you can check it and uh, basically you can have all these uh, snap features the sensitivity of mouse is three pixels uh, to, to to those you are not very familiar with the pixels um, the pixels are the smallest uh, part of your monitor uh, and uh, based on what what kind of monitors you're using your graphic card will uh, generate some number of pixels uh, in length and width so uh, depending on how much pixels your monitor has uh, the mouse sensitivity is going to be for each small movement the minimum movement that you do with your mouse it's going to be three pixels you can make it to one pixel or you can make it leave it with three pixels you can make it higher so uh, you have a coarser resolution um, but I will suggest three as it is here. Uh, it's good to have these numbers here because it will make your meshing faster. And uh, one of the other important things here is, again, if you are uh, uh, kind of an old-fashioned uh, engineer and you're looking for um, doing your structure, like making your structure using the dialog box, um, this is better to do with the dial box. You need more about the, you need more calculation to how much would be, for example, the length of this. When should I start? Where should I stop? Um, rather than with you with the mouse, you just drag and you know click and drag to make your re uh, rectangular, circular, cylindrical, whatever kind of a primitive you are trying to draw. But um, here is a place that you can change the way that Ansoft will. Uh, prompt for uh, designing any uh, faces so you can go with the point or you, you can die with a dialogue with the point you can just use your mouse and for example drag and select uh, the two points of a uh, rectangular but with the dial we have to put uh, punch the numbers for the first and the second point of the uh, of the rectangular so definitely the dialogue box is more accurate but it's not easier. You can toggle between these two uh, using uh, either here or using the F3, F4 uh, key. And the last check, the last uh, check mark here is also another features of the Ansof, and that is when you're ch you're creating any primitives automatically after you're creating created uh, an edit. Uh, box will open so you can change color transparency transparency uh, property of the of the structure and all these things um, right after you finished 
uh, drafting the first structure uh, you can always do that here in the property uh, window of the desktop uh, environment and I don't see any reason that you check this uh, box okay so that concludes the very first uh, uh, basically what do you call it uh, options that you need to know uh, and settings that you have to change before you start your uh, modeling uh, I think I'm just double checking that if I go through all the inform informative uh, informations okay and uh, that's it for uh, now and uh, next step I'm going to uh, uh, walk through the making the PCB uh, and uh, wire bound uh, for simulating the high frequency circuits that are going to be mounted on a PCB. Thank you.